Hi guys and welcome to Scuba Out. Today I want to talk with you about the Suunto SK8 Voiced Compress. Um, just one thing to say, I'm not doing this kind of review or unboxing videos uh, for getting paid out of any company. I'm just doing it by myself because I want to introduce to you the gear I'm really using by myself. I bought this by myself. Nobody is giving me anything for that. So that's just to be sure it's a review based on my experience I want to share with you. So let's do the quick unboxing of the SK8 um, and just unpack it from that nice looking black box of Suunto. So let's see what's actually inside that box. For sure the main component, the compress itself, let's put it beside for now, the voice band. We need to mount this, we will do this in a few minutes. And for sure the manual. I have never read that manual and I think this is not needed. Tell me if there's something in what I need to know. I don't think that I need to know anything from that. So let's jump directly to the nice Suunto SK8 Compress itself. So this is the newest model. I mean, the Compress itself is on the market for a few years now, I don't know, two years or longer even, I don't know. I bought that uh, two, uh, one month, two months ago, ah, it doesn't matter. This is just, I, I bought that. This is the newest model. There's one model from before, the SK7, and the difference between these both Compresses, the newer one and the old one is just, so I was told, is just that the um, that the design of the bezel, of the printings of the number and so on has changed a little bit so that you have a better visibility while diving or reading your compass. That's the main difference, uh, what I know. So the compass itself has this bezel on top which needs to be adjusted for every diving trip or where you want to navigate to. And the good thing is, this is it's, it's pretty tight in, adjust, in adjusting it but it's, it's not too tight. But the good thing is, if you are diving and you are just hitting it accidentally, it's, it's not changing his, it's changing his position. So uh, you're not accidentally changing it and diving in the wrong direction in the worst case. No, that's not happening. That's one good point. The next good point is this big side view panel. I'm using that a lot while diving with my retractor. Um, we will mount a retractor in a few minutes also that you see how to mount a retractor. But with a retractor you also have the possibility to hold it in front of you and look through that big front window. So yes, that's basically um, the main settings or the main main uh, details of a compass. I believe everybody needs uh, knows how to use a compass. Um, if it's needed to, to get another video for that where I am explaining how to use a compass, I can do that. Just let me know, post a comment. Uh, then let's see, we can create a video other length of how to using a diving compass. Um, but the other uh, thing I want to tell you about that compass is the, the angle you can actually hold the compass while diving is pretty big and even if, if, if you tilt it like this, it's performing, it's performing pretty good. So they improved that a lot, that, the, that you can, 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 can tilt the compass while diving. And, and reading it probably, and it's working probably, even if you do it like this. This is one big benefit of that compass, and that was the main reason why I was uh, trying to buy that. So I don't need to watch exactly is it is it is it positioned 100% or not. Uh, it's just holding in front of you, diving, having fun, getting to the point where you want to go to, and coming back safely. That's the main thing why I wanted to have this compass. So. I bought this as a voice compass, so I just want to show you how to mount the actually standard arm voice band. Let's do that. To put this in, we need to remove this small, it's not focusing, though now it's in focus, this small rubber thingy here. Let's, let's just wiggle it apart, it's just pulling it out, it's pretty tight, yeah, so okay, it's out. And now we need to attach the, the voice band. To do that, just hold it like this, yeah, like this, keep that end and you need to push it through this little entry here and then just push. That can, can be sometimes pretty hard to get it pushed 
fool completely that it's coming out here. Sometimes it's a, it's a little game to do. Let's do it that way. Is that working? Yeah. Yeah, not really. Okay. And then you can pull it through. And then you have it like this. Yes? Okay. Then you can just... Okay, if you have it like this, you need to just pull the wristband through this part. So and to avoid that the wristband is always getting out of this latch here, putting this back in again, no. so like this, you need to to put the wobber in or the wobber back in again to this small hole. I'm trying to get this done with my big fingers. Jesus Christ. Okay, now it's in. Okay, so now it, it, it can't it can't uh, slip out anymore. And if you want to to fit it in, just push it like this, and then it's adjusted. So we have the um, the wristband mounted now. So you could just put it on your arm and hold it. But I don't like that. I don't like that because I never have have the arm really in, in front of me directly and so on. I, I, I just don't like this wristband. There's, I don't need to explain the reason why and whatever. I would really like to use to use other ways. So I would just demount the wristband again because it makes so much fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's just pull it out again. So now we have only the compass again. And now I want to put in a retractor. I think everybody knows what a retractor is. You can mount your compass on, on this part here and then you can attach this retractor on your jacket with this latch and then you have it on a yo-yo. So it's always in place on your jacket. If you need it, pull it out, navigate and it's back in place, secured. You can't lose it and you always have it in reachable uh, position somewhere on your jacket. So okay, how to put this in or how to mount it on the uh, on the compass itself is pretty easy. You just have this latch here and you need to push it also all the way through this entry. And on the retractor you see you see here if I pull it out a little bit more, you see this small latch here. You see it's just a little bit higher here. And this needs to be fully submerged into the into the rubber of the compass. So we just push it through until it makes actually this click. And then it's adjusted and can't fall off anymore. And now you have reset up the compass from a whisk compass to a tractor compass. How easy is that? Yes. That's it more or less about the compass. What I wanted to show you, if you want to know something more, just let me know in the comments. And yes, I have to thank you for watching my video again. And uh, if you like that video, please give me a thumbs up. This will, will, will support my channel a lot. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Stay tuned. Bye bye.